What is going on YouTube? Brandon here and today we're going to do a quick update on my 2016 BMW S1000 XR. This is the full dynamic package with all the bells and whistles, the navigation system and everything. So real quick we'll go through um, my thoughts on it now that I've done about 23,000 miles. I've had it over a year, about a year and three months or so now. Um, what I still like about it the changes I've made to it uh, and the issues I've had because I have had some issues and then my thoughts going forward and whether I think it's a worthwhile investment. So let's go through the things I've done to it. So first I added some SW Motec crash protectors uh, just in case. I haven't had to use them but I like them. They, they're minimalist but they offer good protection I think. Um, I had the navigation system installed. I think this is really valuable especially for someone who commutes. Uh, it's fantastic. I installed the Wonderlic um, touring windscreen, which I like. I'm tall, so uh, having a little extra wind protection is good. I also installed the Wonderlic um, wind deflectors on the side. They look OEM. I really like it a lot. It's come from the front here. So you can see, I think it looks really good. I also installed Wonderlic um, radiator and oil cooler uh, guards. And I, Wonderlic stuff's very expensive, but I think, uh, I think it looks really OEM. I like it a lot. Um, this is a Shad SH48 top box. I really like it as well. Uh, better than the BMW OEM one, and it's cheaper. Um, the only other thing I had done to the bike, I had a complaint at very low RPMs. The the fueling was not great. It was a little rough due to emissions requirements. So I had installed a power commander uh, with just a stock DinoJet mapping for the stock exhaust. Uh, unfortunately at the 18,000, and that fixed the fueling, that was fantastic, but unfortunately at the 18,000 mile maintenance where they did the valves, they said the valves were extra out of spec and they basically attributed that to the power commander um, not being calibrated quite correctly for my particular bike. So they said if, uh, if I wasn't planning to do a custom map or a custom exhaust with a map, it would be better to take it out. So I did, and now I just have to deal with the throttle at very low RPMs, like less than 2,000. Uh, it's okay, it's just a minor annoyance. So I'm selling a power commander if you have one uh, exhaust and you need a power commander. Okay, so what do I still like about the bike after 23,000 miles? Number one thing is the riding position. The riding position on this bike is insanely comfortable. Uh, I don't get tired as I did on my previous bike, uh, commuting 100-ish miles every day. Um, it's smooth, the cruise control is nice, the heated grips are amazing, the built-in navigation system with the click wheel over here uh, is really nice. Um, over the course of 23,000 miles, I've averaged uh, 38.6 miles per gallon, which is pretty good. Uh, fuel economy, I usually have to fill up uh, every two days or so, sometimes a little more frequently than that, depending on my route. Um, I'm still using the original chain and sprocket, so I just cleaned and lubed it today. Um, I clean and lube it every week. So I think that's why it's uh, held up so well. I don't have any kinks or anything like that and it's still in spec. Um, so yeah, I'll probably need to adjust it or replace it pretty soon, but it's gone 23,000 miles, which is pretty good. Uh, I believe this is the second set of tires. These are the uh, Pirelli Diablo, what are they? The Angel G, oh, sorry, these are the Pirelli uh, Angel GTs. These are fantastic. They're expensive, but I think I'll buy them again. They've gotten amazing mileage. I think I'm at, man, at least 10,000, probably more than that. I'd have to look in my log, but those are great tires. Um, so like I said, riding position, fuel economy, uh, the throttle is good. The bike has a ton of power. Um, the dynamic suspension is fantastic. Uh, if you're going to get this bike, get all the bells and whistles. I think it's worth it for the amount you're paying. Okay. So all that having been said, I have had some issues with the bike. We'll kind of go from the minor issues up to the major issues. Uh, the first issue I had right after I bought the bike was I heard a little bit of a kind of a knocking in the motor. Uh, it turned out that that was 
or not knocking, but a click, I guess you could say. It sounded like a chain rattle. Uh, it turned out that was the cam chain tensioner. BMW uses a uh, hydrostatic pressure um, cam chain tensioner, which I guess relies on oil pressure when the engine's on to push the tensioner to the correct tension. I think that's a stupid design. Uh, so I replaced that with a mechanical cha cam chain tensioner, and I've had no issues with that rattle returning, so that's good. Um, another issue I had was when they first did the uh, vibration retrofit kit. The initial kit, I was one of the first people to get it, did not have the right bolt size, and so I had a rock in my handlebar assembly, but that was fixed under warranty once they got the updated parts kit. I think I had a video on that at the time. Uh, my headlights go out routinely. Uh, it's really annoying. Uh, in fact, one of them's out right now. I have the bulb in my garage I need to fix. I'm not sure why that is. Um, I've replaced them myself and uh, the dealership replaced them once and they seem to go out about every 3,000 miles or so, one of them. So that's minor annoyance. Okay, so those are the minor issues I've had. Major issues I've had. Um, I had at I think about 15 or 16,000 miles, the uh, water pump started leaking fluid. It was leaking around the sides and stuff. So they had to replace the water pump under warranty. Uh, and the most major issue I, I had was after the 18,000 mile uh, service, the first valve service, I started driving the bike home and within about, I'd say, six or seven minutes the check engine light came on so i drove home it was about two more miles so i got home i called the dealership i was like hey what do you want me to do because my previous mechanic who no longer lives around here he told me the engine light comes on on a bike after a valve service just stop and have me come pick it up and so i called them i was like hey what do you want me to do they said well drive back so i uh hopped on the bike i drove back and about one exit before the dealership the uh, check engine light, it had come on already and it just started blinking and the engine just sh shut off. Um, and fortunately I was in the slow lane because I was about to get off so I merged over to the shoulder uh, and then fortunately there was a highway patrol there who uh, immediately pulled up and put on his cautions and then I called the dealer and they sent a van out, picked the bike up. They had the bike for six weeks, it turned out um, that I needed a new, my ECU was bad. So I don't know what happened, it was fine uh, for, you know, 18, 19,000 miles, whatever it was. And five miles after the maintenance cycle, uh, it went bad. So I don't know what to say about that. It took them six weeks to get all the testing done and approval from Germany and get a new ECU shipped out under warranty. So that was a pretty major issue. They gave me a loaner bike, which was nice, uh, but it's still annoying not to have my bike for that long. So my thoughts going forward, I have 23,000 miles on the bike at this point. Um, I'm going to keep the bike. Uh, I love riding it. I'm going to keep it until about 35,500 miles right before it's out of warranty. It runs out of warranty at 36,000 miles. At 35,500, I'm going to take it in for a second BMW administered um, major service. I was hoping not to do that because they overcharge for it, but I'll do it. Um, and if it has any major issues at that point that have to be replaced under warranty, like another ECU issue or something like that, then I am going to get that done and I'm going to immediately sell or trade in the bike for a new new bike. If I get to 35,005 and I have the major service done and there's no major issues with the bike, I will probably keep it for the long haul, uh, but I will be buying an extended warranty because the amount of warranty work in terms of labor and parts that this bike has accrued over the last year and three months uh, and 23,000 miles has probably been uh, including you know the ECU the water pump the vibration retrofit issue um, I'd say conservatively it's been at least four to five thousand dollars in terms of parts and labor so that's not something I want to pay down the road so if you're gonna buy this bike I would say it's a great bike but buy it with a warranty uh, and that's about it. So yeah, that's my advice for the bike.